Hello and welcome. I'm James Murphy from mcoding.io, where I offer nine-week programming courses. Today, we're going to be solving a hard leak code interview question. How do you find the median of two sorted arrays? Okay, so I have pulled up the problem statement here just so you can see it. Basically, uh, we're just given two sorted arrays. I'm going to be doing this in Python, so that means lists. Uh, we have lists of integers, and we'd like to find the median of the two sorted arrays, meaning that if you were to put both the lists together and then find the median, that's the median that we're looking for. Um, just some constraints on the problem. Uh, there aren't too many numbers in either of the arrays, and at least one of the arrays has something in it. Finally, and the most important thing about the problem statement is that the uh, runtime complexity should be big O of log of m plus n. First up, we're going to start just with the theory. I can't really start coding anything until I know what I want to code. So first, let's just give the lengths of these arrays uh, names. Of course, the first algorithm that comes to mind is probably, well, I have two sorted arrays, so I could merge them together to get one big sorted array, and then in a big sorted array, it's really easy to find the median. It's just the middle element or the average of the two middle elements. But merging them would be um, on the order of uh, linear time. Uh, and we're looking for a logarithmic solution, so I'm not even going to bother with that. So we have to do something uh, using the, the sorted property of the arrays directly without shuffling things around, I'm guessing. I just want to expand upon that idea that I had before, where if I have a single sorted array and I want to find the median, uh, then that's really easy to do. So let me imagine that this C is what I would get if I put A and B together and sorted it. So this would have length n plus m, and then I would be able to find the median just by looking at some index k. Now I know that it's going to depend uh, on whether n plus m is even or odd, so let me do a small example real quick. If I have a three element array, then I think that I want to find uh, the index of this element, of course. And if I have a four element array, then I think I would want to find this element again. So what's standing out to me is that the way that the median is defined, half of the elements are going to be below it, approximately. So some of those elements are going to be taken from A, and some of those elements are going to be taken from B. So I don't really know what order they're going to come in, but I'm going to have um, everything up to and including this median coming from um, elements of A and B. So now I think that it's important to determine how many elements came from A and how many elements came from B. I'll call the number of elements that come from A N and the number of elements that come from B M. So now I think it's important to actually rephrase the problem, not in terms of this index k of where the median is, but rather in terms of these n and m uh, that are how many elements to take. So instead of using this k, instead I'm going to keep track of uh, the number of elements that are to the left of the median, uh, including the median. So in these small examples with just three and four elements, uh, there's two things to the left in, in both cases. And in the case of four elements where there's an even number, uh, I want sort of the leftmost median, where the real median is the average of that one and the one to the right of it. So let me just keep track of the leftmost one. So let me go ahead and redefine k here. I think I actually want k to be uh, the number of things here up to and including the leftmost median uh, in, instead of the index. When I do it this way, both of these simplify. The number of elements that I want uh, is just going to be k is n plus m plus 1. And then I'll do two divides, divide by 2. So the two divides here is just denoting um, I want to do integer division instead of float division, which would be the default in Python. Then with this definition, we now know that n 
plus m should be equal to k. In particular, m I can just rewrite in terms of k and n. So really, I only have one variable here that I need to determine, that's n, and then k I can determine just from the lengths of the arrays, and m I can determine from k and n. So this is starting to sound better and better. Now I have a, a sorted array and a single variable that I'm looking into. I wonder if it's possible to do some kind of binary search. So I don't really want a binary search on the array itself. That doesn't really help me. Um, what I'm more thinking of is, can I binary search on the correct value of n? How many elements should I take? All right, I zoomed out here to give myself just a little bit more room. So let's just see if we can think about what are the basic bounds on n that we can get. Uh, definitely, n needs to be bigger than or equal to zero and less than or equal to um, the number of elements in the array. I can't take more than there are elements. Uh, and I also don't want to take more than the number that I need to take total. So this also needs to be less than k. So those are pretty good bounds on n that I know just from constants that are given to me in the problem. The next question that I'm asking myself is, is there any way to know if n is too big or too small? Okay, so how do I know whether the n elements that I take from A and the m elements that I take from B constitute those elements here, which are supposed to be uh, the ones to the left of the median? Well, that would mean that those n and m elements from A and B have to be the k smallest elements uh, in this theoretical array C that doesn't actually exist yet. So I need the n elements from A that I take plus the m elements from B that I take. I need those to be the smallest k elements, meaning since these are sorted, that I need the maximum of this set of numbers uh, or list to be less than or equal to the minimum of the rest of them, which is going to be A starting at N and onwards, plus B starting at M and onwards. Well, since the arrays are sorted, uh, that maximum is either going to be this last element here or this last element here, and then the minimum is going to be one of the two elements after one of those elements. So now I think I could write down the condition for when I would definitely need more elements from A, meaning when N definitely needs to be bigger than it is. So here's what I think that condition is. The condition is that I took something from B, meaning M is bigger than zero, but the last thing that I took from B should have been taken by A. So the last thing that I took from B is B of M minus one. And that should have been taken from A if the next thing that's in A was actually a smaller value. So if this was strictly bigger than A of N, then that says that I took this element, uh, the mth element from B, but if I had actually increased N by one, I would have gotten a smaller element. And notice that if this condition is satisfied for some N, if I make N smaller and therefore make M bigger, then this inequality only gets worse. If I make n smaller, then the right-hand side gets smaller and the left-hand side gets bigger. So this inequality would still remain true. Okay, so that actually tells me a really important fact. That tells me that the indices, the valid indices for n are partitioned by this predicate. 
So if I imagine the set of valid indices for n, where this starts down at zero and it goes up to, what was it? The minimum of big N and K. If I think about these uh, indices, possible values for N, then think about this statement here. That statement is such that if it's true for some index N, then it's also true for all smaller indices, which means that there's going to be some uh, partition point where everything to the left of that is true and everything to the right of that is false. Now, it could be that this partition point is all the way to the left and everything is false, or it's all the way to the right and everything is true. But regardless, I know that the indices are partitioned in this way. And if you're not familiar, there's a very similar algorithm to binary search called partition point that works exactly in a situation like this. Whenever you have all trues and then all falses, the partition point algorithm does a binary search for the first false value. And in our case, what is the first false value? That's the leftmost median. So that first false value is the first index, the smallest index for which I say n doesn't need to be bigger. Well, that just means that n is exactly right. That means that this inequality holds. But that means that that's exactly that median point. I think that uh, I can handle the evens and odds later. I think that I've got the idea for the algorithm down. So at this point, uh, I'm going to switch over and start coding. Okay, so I've copied the uh, starter code that LeetCode provided and went ahead and imported this capital list for typing. Uh, and let's just get started. Since I'm essentially going to be binary searching on indices that are up to the length of one of the arrays, I'm going to uh, reorder the arrays if necessary to um, make sure that I'm doing it on the smaller one. So let's just make A and B, which is going to be uh, nums1, nums2, if uh, the length of nums1 is less than the length of nums2, else we'll take nums2 and nums1. This way, A is the shorter of the two arrays. Next, I'll go ahead and uh, get the lengths. So this will be the length of A and the length of B. And let's define the total length to just be the sum. Next, I'm going to define this k variable, uh, which according to this formula is going to be the total length plus one divided by two. So let me just call that num to take. Uh, this will be total length plus one integer division by two. So let me just comment this to myself. This is the number of elements to the left of and including the leftmost median. Okay, so Python doesn't have a built-in partition point like C++ does, so I'll just have to write it. We know the low bound is going to be zero, and the high bound is going to be the minimum of the length of the smaller array and the number of elements that we need to take. Then, while the low is less than the high, we go through our loop. We'll take n to be uh, the midpoint, low plus high divided by two. We don't need to worry about overflow in Python, although if you're doing this in C++, you would have to worry about that. Um, then m is just the number to take minus n. And then we have our uh, predicate. So we'll say 
if m is bigger than zero and uh, b of m minus one is bigger than a of n, then that means that, uh, what did we say over here? So I just copied this condition down. If this condition is true, then that means I definitely need uh, a bigger n. So in that case, I will increase my low to n plus one, and otherwise I will decrease my high to n. Okay, that's uh, the partition point. So at the end of this, uh, the low value, which is now equal to the high value, is the partition point that we're looking for. So I'll take n is low, and m is, again, the num to take minus n. So now that I know the correct values of n and m, because I found this partition point, now I will go ahead and compute this value, which is the value of the leftmost uh, median. So it's either going to be a of n minus one or b of m minus one, but uh, because we don't really know how many we took from each array, uh, those values might be out of bounds. So I just need to take this maximum in a way that I'm never checking whether something is out of bounds. So that value I'll just call current, and let's see. That'll be a of n minus one. If either I didn't take anything from b, so if m is zero, or if I did take something from b uh, and I also took something from a, so n needs to be bigger than zero, and that thing is the bigger of the two. So a of n minus one uh, is bigger than or equal to b of n minus one, b of m minus one. Otherwise, it's b of m minus one. Okay, and if the number of elements is odd, then we just need to return this. So I'll say, if the total length uh, mod two is not zero, uh, then let's just return that current value. Otherwise, it's even, and we need to average it with the next value. So the next value is actually going to be this minimum. And we can compute that uh, in a similar way to the, the current value. That one is, um, well, it's either gonna be A of N or B of M, depending on whether the indices make sense. So it'll be A of N if either M is out of bounds, meaning M is big M, or neither of them is out of bounds, so we need to check whether n is less than big N, and um, a of n is the smaller one. Otherwise, it'll be b of m. All right, then once we have the current and the next, then we just return the average. Okay, there you have it. Let's go ahead and copy paste this into leap code and see if I made any mistakes. All right, here we go. Let's submit. All right, we got it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What problem should I do next?